Just down the road from Northcliffe, we probably spent about, I don't know, 50 odd, 60 k's maybe, maybe a little bit further, can't remember. Anyway, we are about 40, 50 k's from Warpole, and uh, I don't know whether I'd highly recommend this little spot. It's a, it was a little gravel pit on the left hand side, and uh, they're doing some roadworks. But fortunately, it is a long weekend, and uh, they're not doing the roadworks, and I think we can pop up here. We haven't had anybody. It's a weekend as well, so you know it's a sad day I think at the moment. So looks like we can squeeze in here. Nobody's uh, told us to move on. Nobody else has come up the road, so should be okay. So well, uh, we've got good good uh, internet and a uh, bit of bit of solar going on, so it should be a nice little spot just to park up and relax and stay out of uh, um, you know distractions and things. Jude's hitting the books again and getting some. Uh, getting some work done on the internet so uh, we'll uh, enjoy this lovely serene quiet little spot it's going to be very nice and relaxing here Time to move on again. Been a good little spot. This one, I think it's in Shannon's Forest or something there. It's uh, just a little uh, gravel um, area on the left-hand side as you're heading towards Warpok. And um, as you can see, there's a little bit of construction going on, but this is a holiday weekend. Nobody came in, so peace and quiet. What a night last night. It was really, really pretty. Moon coming up through these trees was fantastic. A little bit of night sky. And then we got that nice whiff. Haven't heard rain for a while, so obviously these trees generate their own little sort of microclimate and you get a little bit of uh, mist in the rain and uh, yeah, it's been, been a totally different type of um, uh, atmosphere and um, oh, just experience, yeah, been a totally different experience coming through bush and things to where we've been and that top end sort of stuff. So pretty magical, a little bit challenging to drive though too, of course you've got a lot of hills and windies and lots of narrows and things. So. Yeah, just uh, have to take a bit more care and a little bit more thought on where you're going. So yeah, we're just going down the road. Another 35, 40 odd k's down the road, there's another stop. And uh, hopefully uh, it'll be uh, a little bit more firmer ground and uh, a little bit closer to um, Walpole for our next assault through to Denmark. And uh, we'll get our uh, Starlink back up again. And yeah, Jude's still working through the mountain of work I've given her. She's starting to fire a few chores my way too, which uh, I'm finding a bit challenging with the uh, computer. So, uh, but I've got to do what I can to, to help her get through all this. I've created it. <laughs> anyway, we'll see you down the road. A little late in the evening catch up. We uh, left a very quiet little uh, campsite this morning and had a nice little quick drive through to this little spot. This little spot's just called um, north of, uh, I think it was northwest of Walpole. It's about um, 18, 20 odd k's from Walpole. And as you can see, it's just a drive-in um, little stop here. There's uh, about five or six of us here so far. Great little spot. We um, touched up uh, the old Starlink and uh, got some good downloads and uh, uploads there for our, uh, our channel. So Jude's been very, very busy. She's done a great job. Um, so uh, we just uh, finished Tucker. So I thought I'd better get out here and just uh, show what we've got just in case conditions are different tomorrow. Uh, so tomorrow, uh, big challenge. We're going to go through Walpole, um, heading towards the, uh, we might, weather permitting. 
see how the uh, treetop walk goes and then um, onwards if we can get accommodation in Denmark and then if we can get accommodation in Denmark we might get ourselves settled there either tomorrow afternoon or tomorrow morning go and have a, uh, a look at Elephant Rock and uh, Greenpool and uh, then move on from there yeah the mystery but we'll see what tomorrow brings eh? That's a slide coming in. It means wagons ho, we're about to go again. So uh, just going down the road, Walpole, empty out you know what, and then continue about halfway between Walpole and Denmark, going up into the trees. Right, welcome to the Valley of the Giants. Um, I don't know whether you're here, you can see a few of the old tops of some of these trees. Look at them, that's massive. There's one over here which uh, would be wider than my, my trailer. That's that one coming into view, boom, now, that one there. Oh, it's a, it's a doozy. A lot, of the, a lot of the tops going out of them though. I think when they reach a certain age, they say that they break out. Anyway, Valley of the Giants, it's uh, not far out of Warpole. We just uh, headed uh, south. Uh, well, I guess it's a, what is it, a, a southeasterly type direction or an easterly direction from Walpole. I think it was only about um, 16 k's, I think. So uh, bright and early, as you can see, car park. Easy trip in, um, piece of cake. The road was nicely sealed and uh, not too hilly, not too windy. And um, down the end here, you're greeted by these uh, lovely big uh, parks for caravans and RVs. So that's where we are at the moment. Better go and catch up with you. I'm sure you're going to see plenty of birds as we climb into the, the treetops, but we are greeted by absolute little gorgeous birdies. Here we go, the Valley of the Giants treetop walk. Go and see about it. Been here, oh, I think it was what, 2008, probably. Yeah, so a few years ago. Good to go today. It's a bit of, uh, bit of maintenance you can hear going on in the back there. They're uh, putting in a new boardwalk to the Empire of the Giants or something like that, I think it is. So uh, yeah, got here nice and early. Um, it was just after nine. All right, where's my sidekick? Is she back I'm again? Coming. I'm coming, I'm back. I'm All right, here. there she is. Sorry. <laughs> Not. All right, so yeah, nice easy drive into the Valley of the Giants. It was at 21 bucks, which is, is up there, but uh, you know, hey, there's a lot of infrastructure here, and uh, I guess it goes towards uh, keeping it maintained. maintained and looking after things. But yeah, we'll go and uh, have a look at uh, what we got here. You know, it gets you up close to this beast. Obviously the photos don't really give you a big comparison, but... Easy. There's the walk duties going on there now. Going up. And it keeps going up. Maybe to where those next few people are over in that corner there.
in this first section. It's um, meant to simulate how the, the branches and the tree moves up here, and trust me, ooh, got the wobbles on. <laughs> I don't mind the wobbles. But anyway, this is a, a nice way to get up into the treetop canopy. Um, obviously, I took the hard way the other day up the old pins of the uh, Dave Evans bicentennial tree. This is a much cruisier way to do it. You go about halfway along the walk here. Well, up that first band, and there's that one over there. Who's waiting for me at this little knuckle? Just to prove I'm not jumping up and down and walking. The idea of the motion going on in the bridge. I wasn't jumping. So we're just coming across that top point of the trees and we're just coming out into the open and uh, you can start feeling the breeze, some of the coastal breeze coming through and uh, it's giving a little bit more feeling up here. But it's a, it's a good day to do it. Yeah, it was a little iffy there uh, yesterday and so we held off but Holding off has been really uh, good because uh, we have made it to the highest point of the treetop walk, 40 metres above the ground. The red tingle trees still tower above you and can reach up to nearly 70 metres. How's that, Jude, eh? Where are you? Lovely. <laughs> well, considering we're not anchored. No. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's a pretty wicked feeling. It's like, it's like moving at least. Five inches each way. <laughs> yeah, I mean we're still as still as what we can be, and uh, it's got a bit of a sway on it. It's yeah. Is that what it says? Well, five. Oh yeah. Five people per platform. Right? Ten people per span. Five people per flat platform. So yeah, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah. All right, we'll just stay put. Oh well, just about ready to come back down to earth. Boy oh, said I had my heads up in clouds or in trees. Anyway, back on terra firma. Nice walk, nice and quiet. Listening to the the wind in the trees. Oh, pretty spot. Alrighty, so behind me, or beside me, the tree surrounding the old F.B. Holden was at one time the most loved tree in the southwest. With a girth of 24 metres, people would drive their cars into the hollow tree trunk and get that must have photo. Sadly, the tree's number of admirers and old age led to its eventual demise in 1990. The famous Tingle's shallow rooted system was so compacted from the constant visitation that the tree fell down. The death of the giant tree spurred the development of a treetop walk and ancient empire boardwalk in 1996, which now allow visitors to enjoy the Tingle forest with minimal impact. There you go. There's a, a sample of how big the tree kind of was. And if you don't believe me, there is a photo of the actual tree.
Oh, how funny is this? We're cruising from um, the um, the giant valley of the giants there, cruising through. We're not far from Denmark, and I had this truck gaining on me. I thought, uh, we see the sign coming up, cider. Ooh, that looks a bit of me. And uh, a bit of Jude too. And uh, so then as I get closer to it, I start indicating to turn off. And um, I hear this um, CB come across the CB. It's a truck driver behind me. Make sure you go in and taste pistachio ice cream. It's good. <laughs> so how funny was that? So uh, good recommendation. Where are we? It's called the Denmark Good Food Company or Factory. Denmark Good Food Factory. And uh, sounds like they've got quite a bit of uh, burgers, um, toffees, ice creams, cideries, and uh, some different flavours and things. So it's a bit of a grey day. Can't think of a better spot but to call into here. Give it a try. So Jude just got up there. A little tasting of the paddle from the Alfred Rock Cider Company. And uh, we start off with a, we've got a dry apple, a medium apple, apple ginger. Ooh, and she's got us a apple jalapeno chili. So uh, look forward to that one. Watch this spot. So here we go. Cheers. That one's definitely the dry apple. Medium apple. Mm. Apple ginger. Apple, alpino, chili. Oh, holy smokes. Well, all I can say is that the ciders went down very, very well. Very nice, very tasty. Anyway, the uh, business was um, started here around about 16 years ago. And the blokes um, expanded into a bunch of other things. I think they started with the toffee first. I mean, toffee is absolutely gorgeous. There's um, their cheeses. So we had the, the toffees, the cider, um, there is um, ice creams, and um, we've got this um, distillery going too for gin. And they call it the, the Right Wave or something. It's uh, there's apparently one of the biggest um, uh, right handers out here in the world. So uh, it's got a gin named after it. And Jude's absolutely hammered the um, preservatives and bits and pieces out of here as well. She's done really good. I mean, I go like, oh, cool, here's about six or seven jars of preservatives. And we go like, oh, how much is that? But no, very, very reasonable prices and things. So yeah, nice place, got all the merchandise and things out here. And then you pop out to a beautiful um, courtyard where you can um, enjoy your drinks overlooking their boundary. We got check-ins, peacocks running around, plenty of parking too, which was good. Yeah, top little spot. Very nice. All right, so I've just come back. <laughs> yeah, there's peacocks, honey. There's peacocks. You can't feed them. Anyway, so I just come back from uh, having a little walk around the old, uh, the old shop there. Beautiful little shop, lovely uh, people to come and talk to. But, look at this. Oh, Denmark's biggest cone. And it is huge. That's good, what flavor did you get? Uh, caramel macadamian. 
Oh, you got macadamia, caramel no, macadamia? No, oh, no? no oh, it's got a twist. Another one, and fig, burnt fig. Burnt fig. Looks good. Give it a taste before it goes all over the place. We'll go and enjoy it inside. Very nice. Good. I must stop. And as, as I mentioned, hey, we're pulling in and that trucky came over the CB. Yeah, make sure you try, try the ice cream. It's, it's fun to go down. So here's your flavours. So you got the chocolate, bubblegum, mango, mango, salted caramel, burnt fig, coconut and banana, caramel honey macadamia, strawberry, <laughs> boring vanilla, mixed berries, vegan apple, blood orange. <laughs> Terrific looking burgers. Enjoy your ice cream. Cheers. And then we had some ciders. And jalapeno was not too bad. And a right stir. Hello, hello, testing. Oh well, finally being able to tear ourselves away from the good food factory, appropriately named. These guys have got it covered. Great cider, great cheese, great ice cream, fantastic burgers, um, awesome distillery. So um, yeah, if you're ever in Denmark or if you ever see any of their food, grab it. It's beautiful. Um, was it uh, Jill? and uh, John, fabulous hosts, real, real nice people. Uh, the parking down here isn't too bad if you don't have another person like myself hogging all the park, but if you're coming in with a van, I was able to do a, there's extra parking, I think down the side here, go down the back here. Um, and then for our van, there's, there's room on the other side of the van there if you negotiate around the corner there too. And, uh, Easy drive, easy pull off the main road too. So uh, great spot. So don't just look at uh, your uh, your high trees, your um, Valley of the Giants, and of course your Elephant Rock uh, pools and green pools and that sort of place. This is this is one of the spots you want to come and have a look at too. Anyway, full belly, on my way. Well, I got a pretty nice, easy descent down to the beach. Down these stairs are good. No wind down here. You're trapped in between a couple of big, big rocks, big boulders. And then we're going to walk between a couple of big boulders. Pretty neat entrance. Here we go. Oh, I get wet. Tides and how cool is this? It's cool and the water is cold. Oh. Yeah, definitely made my mind up about not swimming in this. Made it to Elephant Rock. How good is that? What a beautiful spot this would be. Well, it is.
now I'm going to head to the Green Falls. And they looked amazing from up there, so looking forward to taking this little track around the bottom. See how it goes. I know this is going to be a bit risque, but we'll do a little panorama here, um, looking back over towards where Elephant Rock is, and then uh, you got to you got to like for all this wind because it really shows the true nature on how I get pissed is when it's windy like this. So uh, swinging back around into Green Pool down on that back, off the right hand corner there. Alrighty, it's farewell. Hey love, you got your heart on your sleeve, but the shirt on your back's a bit small. Hey you, yeah your colors are changing, the world ain't